Hello, good evening, and welcome once again to PowerPoint Worship Center. Today is another wonderful Thursday, uh, Sunday, and it is our pleasure to be with you once more um, in this day that the Lord God has made, and we are rejoicing and we are being glad in it. Welcome and thank you for allowing us into your presence. God has a special message for you. God has a special blessing for you tonight. So I want you to share this video. Tell a friend, tell an, an enemy, tell a loved one, and be a blessing to somebody. My wife will say that your timeline is somebody else's lifeline. So tonight, be somebody's lifeline and share this broadcast, share this message, either on Facebook or on YouTube, wherever you may find yourself. Share this message, let the message go viral as we prepare for or we prepare to enter into what God has for us today. Today is going to be a very short service. I promise you it's going to be very short. <laughs> so, God has a special message for just one person, and I believe that one person is you. So, share this message to everybody. Share the broadcast to everybody. Welcome once again to PowerPoint. I am Pastor Richmond, and I'm here with Pastor Anita, my lovely wife. Tonight is a blessing, it's a night of a difference. It's not a night of chaos, but it's a night of a joyous, common peace and realization. So let's share this broadcast as we begin our service. Let's take a word of prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, we bless you. We lift tonight's service into your hands. We take authority over the atmosphere, over the airwaves. Let your word come out with power and with clarity. Let your word reach your people, whoever you've intended that will receive this word today. That, Father, it will be a blessing unto them. That it will bring them a new enlightenment. It will bring them a new understanding and draw them all closer to you than they were to, uh, this morning. Let this word, O oh Lord, come and bring healing to your people. Bring a time of refreshment to their souls uh, and bring liberation into their spirit. We thank you and bless you tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So we're going to go um, straight into um, a time of worship with Minister Rich Samuels. And when we come back, we'll, we'll get into the word. So just prepare yourself for a short time of worship. And get your Bible and your pens and your um, iPads and everything you use to write or take notes. Because tonight is a night of a difference. God bless you.
Thank you, thank you so much and welcome back. God bless you so much. God bless you. Please share and write something. Let us know that you are alive, you are with us, and you are being blessed tonight in the name of Jesus. So, tonight my message title is Seeing with the light of God and I want us to get right into the word before I get too excited so let's go to the book of Genesis we're going to read two portions of scripture before um, I, go, I start the sermon all right so let's go to Genesis chapter number three the very first verse Genesis 3 the verse number one Are you there? Is somebody there? Genesis 3, the verse number 1. Seeing through God's light. That is the message we're preaching about today. It said, Now the serpent was more crafty, more subtle, more smarter than any other beast or animal of the field that the Lord God had made. He said, now the serpent was more crafty than or more smart, more talented than any an, other animal of the field that the Lord God had made. And then we'll go to um, 2 Corinthians um, 11, the verse number 3. Paul says that but I am afraid that just as the serpent deceived Eve by his treachery, your mind may be led astray from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ. Amen. So, so when God created um, all his creation, he intended that some beings or some of his creations would be more smarter than others. So, man, scientifically, we believe that man is on top of the food chain. Amen. So, God gave us very devout intellect, a deep understanding, a level of wisdom and thinking that is not common to any other of uh, the creations that he created. So if for some reason, uh, because, of, because of genetics, some people are not that smart, for you who is a Christian, who is a born again Christian, you don't have to worry about it because the Bible says that Christ is our wisdom. So as you and I have Christ, we don't have a problem with wisdom. We are wise people. <laughs> Amen. So when the Bible says that the serpent was more subtle, he wasn't talking about the literal serpent. He's not talking about the animal serpent. He is talking about the, 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 the spirit that took over the body of the serpent. Because the serpent on its own is not that smart. It's not that wise. But the spirit that took over the serpent is what the Bible is referring to as cunning. You see, the, the serpent is not too smart. That is why we can catch the serpent. You see, anybody can catch a serpent. As long as you have the proper training. You know, you can take the serpent by its tail. 
you can catch an animal as long as you have the training for it. Me, for instance, I don't like an, I can't catch animals. I have a phobia with certain animals. So when my wife sees a rat and she's calling for me, I only come out because I'm the last man in the house. That is why I come out. But <laughs> if I want to be uh, a, a good pest, uh, pest, uh, pest controller, I can do that because I can get training for it. But I have a personal phobia with, when it comes to animals. Just like people have phobia when it comes to swimming. It is not their calling. They can swim. There's nothing they can do. For especially we blacks or Africans, we have phobia with animals. We don't catch any animal. Have you seen a black person on Nash, uh, uh, National Geographic? We don't do that. <laughs> when we see the animal, we kill the animal. Ours is to enter into sports, be on the track and field, be in soccer, football, basketball, whatever it may be. But we, black people don't usually mess with animals. We don't do that. Amen. <laughs> so, human beings, we are different. So, it's not about the physical serpent. It's talking about the creature that took advantage of the body of the serpent. You understand? Because you and I know that spirits cannot function without a body. So they always want to possess a body so that they can work through that body they possess. That is why a lot of people spend time in the deliverance ministry. Always going for all kinds of deliverance. Because an error has happened and uh, a serpent has taken over the body. Amen. So they need to go through deliverance. Amen. So, the devil doesn't have that much power. One thing that the devil has is his cunning ability, his subtlety and his ability to deceive people. Because you remember that the Bible said that Christ has stripped him naked of all his powers. But what he has is his wisdom, his brains. He has the ability to turn every situation, to turn every mind to function in the way he desires. He has the ability to convince you to do what you do not want to do, but you do what he wants to do. <coughs> that is the ability of the devil. His strongest weapon is his cunning and his crafty nature. That is why our second scripture we read, he said that, but I am afraid. Paul is saying that the one thing that I am afraid of the devil is that just as he was deceived Eve by his treachery in the, uh, his treachery. Let me read it. He said, but I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety. So your mind should not be corrupted by the simplicity that is in Christ or be led astray from a sincere devotion to Christ. Meaning that the devil, was, the one thing that Paul is afraid of is that the devil's ability to cause you to walk away from the love of Christ, your first deal, your first love, the first thing that caused you to come to Christ, the devil's ability for you to lose it, to take it away from you. The devil's ability to cause you to walk away from God and from the things of God, to look down upon the things of God. That ability is what the, the, uh, the Bible, uh, Paul is talking about that it is my greatest fear. My greatest fear is that you will be able to steal the devil can steal your love for God, your love for Christ. So there is a scripture we always want, to, we like to quote that wisdom is the principal thing. Meaning that we need to have wisdom. 
Because when you have wisdom, then you can be able to withstand the activity of the devil. Because remember the other day Paul said that, for we do not want to be ignorant of the devices of the devil. The one way you can become not ignorant of the devices of the devil is for you to have what? Wisdom. When you have wisdom, I can assure you that 99% of your battles have come to an end. I mean 99% of your battles will come to an end when you have wisdom. Because uh, mathematically, they say you can what? Round off a number to the nearest what? whole number. So your probability of losing a battle with the devil is 99%. Meaning that you only have 1% to fail. Your failure rate is only 1%. So the devil deals with subtlety. Hello, hold on for me one second. Let me, we're having some technical difficulties. Thank you, Spirit of God.